This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Play, a leading game developer providing player favorites to the most successful brands across the industry. With an award-winning multi-product portfolio of slots, live casino, bingo, virtual sports, and more, Pragmatic Play is powering up new possibilities of play through one single API. Visit pragmaticplay.com and discover your favorite every time. Hey, Simon. Uh, it's uh, great to have you here, of course. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, chat T2P and iGaming. You guys obviously have some super interesting uh, news coming up. But before we start that, I want to ask Ian in the, in the background here if we can get these like, really fun images on the screens. And I apologize in, in, in advance for those who are just listening now. But uh, there was a really fun uh, LinkedIn post uh, uh, a while ago, uh, a couple of days ago, by Talric uh, Balus of um, uh, WIS, the CCO. And he created, <laughs> so as we see here on the TV, what he did is he created some prompts through ChatGPT uh, to create superheroes based on iGaming sportbooks. <laughs> and then he fed those prompts into Midjourney, which is like the uh, AI image uh, generator. And then this is what came out. So as you see here, this is Leo Vegas, this like big buffed up uh, guy. <laughs> this is essentially the superhero version of Leo Vegas. And then if we go to the next one, we see Sporting Bat. <laughs> what do you think of Pretty that, Simon? <laughs> well, they all look really cool. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a superhero, that's for sure. What about the next one, Jan? That's a paramatch is like really cool, like dark jokerish. It's a good point. interpretation. Almost, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That it is. Okay, the next one. That's the Bat365. That's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. They always also invented a logo on the chest, which yeah. is like uh, yeah, exactly. great. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so, I mean, this is a little bit what we're going to talk about today, because obviously it hasn't escaped anyone that uh, chat is uh, potentially the next uh, like massive uh, or opening uh, kind of the doors to the next massive like revolution uh, here, but not only chat TTP, but also kind of like working with different AI tools together to create mm. some magic and so on and so forth. But my first question to you, uh, Simon, uh, today is, you know, the, the, when chat TTP launched a couple of months ago or one month ago, it almost failed felt like the world changed in some regard. It mm -hmm. almost felt like the world upgraded itself. Uh, mm. uh, but, you know, this, these type of promises have happened before, kind of hype cycles come and go. And so my question to you is like, is this just another hype cycle or is there, is there actually something special to what is happening mm, right no, now? No, I, I, I don't think this is a hype. I think there has been, we have been waiting for something very disruptive for some time. And I mean, I, I, I resonate with this moment as a little bit as a, I remember when, when iPhone was introduced in the market and I, I was, I, I, I was instantly like sort of bulking up on iPhones. I knew they were going to be impossible to get hold of in Sweden. Yeah. And I just like, sort of, I jumped, up? I found a contact in the U S who managed <laughs> to buy shitloads of iPhones yeah. and I shipped them overseas. And, oh, that, no that was, and that was probably not legal and all of that stuff. I don't know exactly how that works, <laughs> but I wasn't that old back then. Um, but that moment of just realizing that, you know, something is changing and changing really quickly. I think this is a little bit similar. Um, there has been a couple of other, um, aspects of that in the streaming world and, and, and other things, but the language has been, the language tech has been sort of on the coming for a, for a while, but it, no, it's, it's not something that is going to go away. This is, we're going to have to adapt to a new, a new layer of innovation that is going to change how businesses are wired, what we do as people, how we interact with things. I think it just takes everyone by shock every time it comes like this, boom, it's just like, whoa, what just happened? Because when you, the first experience with it is like, shit, this is hocus pocus, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, the Swedish expression right. of magician It's just like, yes. th this is just weird, right? The experience is so, so different from anything that you've ever had yeah. and experienced in the past. And it's, and it's th at that moment, I think for, for a lot of people, it's scary. You know, you start wandering off in your mind. It's just like, what happens here? You know, it's yeah. like, what's, where is this going? As a matter of fact, the technology has been around for a while. The way that they built the, um, the engine or trained the model is still, it's a lot of parameters that are being fed in to super compute, computing power that is able to sort of output something like this. It's, it's, it takes sort of the 
power of a lot in order to do it. And, and it happened and then we looked at it and we see, shit, you know, this is so much more than we could ever expect. That the, the, we think about innovation as a linear thing sometimes and then it just, boom, like it just drops. Yeah, exponential. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's what happened here. So it's not going anywhere. It, we're going to adapt to it. I think it's going to be a little bit of a, oh, now everyone is talking about it and everyone is figuring out and everyone is like changing everything they're doing to jump on the technology and get on it and stuff. But that's obviously going to be a little bit of a hype for now. And then it's going to settle down and then we're going to find ways on how we're going to utilize this technology in a very smart way to support what we do in, yeah. in life. You know, uh, I, can, I can liken it to something and I, I just realized now, like, I don't know if you've ever been banned from Facebook or something, like if you ever got like a temporary <laughs> ban or something like that. I don't think I have. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm nice. asking. I'm a- <laughs> That's good. Uh, I'm asking because I remember once I got, actually when, when we, we used to work together at BetSafe back in the day, mm-hmm. I started this like poker BetSafe page on Facebook right. and I got banned from Facebook uh, and, uh, you know, it told me that like there might not be a way for me to get my account back. And I remember just the horror that I felt of like not being able to uh, access my Facebook account. Right. And similarly, now we chat GTP, it took such a short time for me to like integrate GTP in my life that uh, now from time to time the servers are full. Yeah. The first time this happened, I felt the panic feeling I got <laughs> when, I, when I got locked out of Facebook. And so immediately there's like an addiction there yeah. to this product. No, it's fun. It is stupid fun. It's yes. like you can spend hours on it. You can yeah. just go off on, on adventures in this little engine and you yeah. can just like have a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and, and that's quite cool. Yes. Yeah. And, and so for, for you yourself, I mean, like uh, when you started using it, what, uh, what was like your first prompts that you put in? Like, oh, and, 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 like, and what a good how, question. <laughs> and, and like what would you, uh, how did it then develop? Like how do you use it today, for example? Oh, wow. Okay. Now that was something I haven't, I haven't thought about that uh-huh. actually. What, what did I use it for? We, I think there was a couple of, there was something, I think it actually seemed up from the team that was, that was, we, we were doing a, a December challenge in the team. I remember at the office, yeah. so there was a December challenge where there was a calendar. So uh, this co- guy called Max in the team, he, he was posting a picture every day. And the, every picture that was posted took you closer to the answer. And the sooner that you could figure out what the last picture would be, um, it was a riddle, essentially. Okay. Um, the, the, the quicker you did it. And, and a couple of the guys, they got in really early. I think it was on day two or something like that. Um, started using ChatGPT to try to figure out, um, to interpret the images and see what this is connected to. And they passed a guess. I don't remember if they actually got the right guess, but that was the first thing that at least when I, when I, um, when I started, what's going on here? And I started getting involved. Yeah. And then I sat down and I started playing around with it. We've been, you have to also remember that from Fast Track's perspective, you know, I'm, I'm coming in with this a little bit from the side of, that we have a business and our vision is to build the first self-learning engagement platform in the market. And so I've been sort of having my, been looking for a technology that can help us overcome a language problem, which is essentially be able to produce this type of content. So I was quite quick on going in there and seeing how well would it be able to understand intent, like, be able, you know, with instruction, be able to say something and then be able to get like some human like content back. And I realized in about five seconds that, oh, this, this is quite good. You know, (laughs) this is quite vast in terms of what it can do. Um, so I jumped in, I was quite deep into, you know, is this going to be a viable option for us to use as a, to, to generate content inside uh, our CRM platform that, and then and then I did that but then equally I was also on I was just in the middle of writing a press release or we were as a team and, and I remember it was something we wanted to talk about it was not about this it was something about something completely different and I actually just asked it to generate it it was based yeah. on no instructions whatsoever I just said like this has happened write me a press release about this yes and and, and then it came back and you see it running and then and then I brought in uh, Jenny from the HR team who um who wanted to work on a couple of policies for, for the staff. And I was just like, Jenny, Jenny, let's try it. It's just like, you, you haven't started drafting yet. No, no, no. Okay, let's do it. 
Yeah. So um, I don't know if it was she wanted to rewrite the safety and fire policy or health policy or something like that. And I had, we just like put it in, it's just like suggest, you know, we gave it some instructions. We are a Maltese company. We need this and that. Um, and then it output a whole policy. And then I told yeah. her like, look at this now. It's like, let's just put in, you know, um, make it a little bit more like the type of tone of voice that we're using in fast track to just spice it up a bit, make it a bit more fun. And we did that. And then it was like, <laughs> But it was also quite quick. You can't just rely and take that and yeah. just like, boom, you yeah. need, you, th there are limitations in this. I'm sure we're going to talk about that, but yeah. I mean, it's still really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, really. And I think that was kind of like the first use cases that most people uh, discovered is uh, copywriting, especially like writing press releases, changing text uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, are there any other use cases that you've seen uh, maybe yourself that you've used or just in general in the in the tech world that you've been impressed by? Some, yeah, I got, I got quite impressed. We got a guy in the team called Gustav and he had he, he had to develop, like we have our own machine, le machine learning technology internally. And, and what this is all built on is obviously I, I don't, these parameters that you often think about when you think about ChatGPT in similar ways, we, we talk about features internally. It's, it's the language we use. And when we develop these features, you have to mine the data that we have in the database. And um, sometimes you know what data you need and what you need to do with that data in order to get it to be some uh, useful data that you can actually use on a player, for example, in, in the CRM platform. And he wanted to develop a new feature. And we're using a platform called um, ClickHouse, which is a long, which, which we're using as a database for um, when we are doing really big queries. And he managed to use, he has no knowledge about writing SQL. He has no knowledge about writing, you know, any sort of code to <laughs> communicate with databases. And, and he managed to actually build a click house query um, using ChatGPT to give him the feature that he was looking for. And that also explains, you know, in a completely different dimension, um, what type of problems that you can overcome. Hmm. Amazing. So yeah, it makes sense. It's uh, kind of another natural progression of, of the chat TDP is to be able to kind of democratize coding uh, in a way as well. So like coding and building things obviously mm. has been a very technical profession. Whereas, um, you know, even today or definitely in the near future, you would imagine that uh, rather than coding yourself, just like you would instruct someone that would, that you want to code something, you would just tell mm. the AI exactly what you want uh, built and you would imagine that as the tool progress it's going to be easier and easier for layman people like ourselves uh, to be able to build things like if, you could imagine that um, in the near future rather than going to a web agency to create a website that you could just give that brief to chat gpt or whatever tool you are looking to use mm -hmm. in order to create your website in like a second rather yeah. than like three months and uh, you know, 50,000 euro later. No, possibly. Um, there, there is going to be, I, I think there is a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work that can be done, um, using this type of technology or chat GPT in particular. I think, um, anything that is like easily delegated, like downwards, that is like something then, then you suddenly, you could potentially unlock an army of hands that can help you like in an instant that is able to produce something for you but coding like th that's the thing like it's like how far can you push it i think yeah as an as an amateur or as an as an recreational developer you can probably build applications that you can that you can use from that but i mean where the technology is right now at least i believe that there is a a, a, a decent amount of subject matter expertise that is required in order to vet that whatever you are asking just like you would be with another team member, by the way, like that you are, if you're a team leader of a tech team, or if you are a, um, you know, you're a copy team, or, or if you are a, a CRM team, or if you are a, whatever it is, really a marketing team, um, whether it's social media or whether it's coding, I, I think you need to be able to pick up whatever has been produced and be able to quality assure that that actually makes sense. Uh, and if you don't have those necessary skills to do that, I think from a recreational perspective, you can do a lot. But in order to use it professionally, then I think you still require that. And, I, you know, we don't know if that's going to be required in the future. <laughs> right. But right now, that's at least a limitation. Right. Um, and, um, and I think that's, that's realistic, right? You are gonna, you're going to really have access to an army of... The, the, the level of productivity that this is going to unlock is unprecedented, like right. in every single aspect. Like even today, if, 
you, you're probably getting your, your hands dirty in the platform, right? And most people should be. We haven't really figured out exactly how we're going to apply it, but there are so many ways we can see already where it can just do a lot of grunt work. It can do a lot of work for you um, very quickly. And this technology is without doubt going to be deeply embedded into um, the work OS that we are using every day, whatever that is. Um, and, um, and that's just a reality. So, so when I introduced this to our team, I think uh, it, it was quite funny to see the reaction depending on the department in the team. Mm -hmm. And I think um, many people who get introduced to this tool, their first reaction is, is this going to threaten my work, like my livelihood? And I suppose uh, that there are actually roles and departments and professions that will be like disrupted uh, immediately by a tool like this. What uh, what specific professions do you think will it, like be disrupted in the short term and perhaps then in the mid term? We're still at one point right? So imagine mm. two point and other tools. What do you think? Um, I mean, the most obvious ones are for sure copywriting, translation, translating content, like anything that has to do with content production, I think is going to be, is going to be having a very different process moving forward. Um, with this in mind, there's going to be a lot of people on the fans and they're going to say why it's not going to work and, and all of these different things. But that's just a matter of, even if there are certain things that are not working right now, um, you know, it's going to find its way to resolve those type of stuff. For me, that is, that is a hundred percent. Um, so I think like anything that is like easily delegated that can be done in an isolated environment, um, is something and that where you can provide clear instructions for what you want as an output, then I think you're that that's, that's done, but it also has to be done. That is not necessarily requires, um, up to date, um, data potentially in, in sourcing that. Like if the task that you're delegating is actually sourcing data that is here and now, um, that obviously is not possible right now. Can, can, can you talk here why that is? Uh, I think this is maybe well, something that most people don't understand. That is. I think there are a lot of people that are maybe more um, better positioned than me to talk about the technology behind it. But it's, but it's, you know, this is a model that is trained based on the open web back in, I think, 2021. Right. So it's like a fixed amount of data that is trained. It, on. It's, take, it, it's actually like, it's exactly how you would go about th this type of way of um, training a machine learning model. It's just really large data set. Like it's just so much more than it's ever been done before. Um, the, the actual process has been around for a long time and it has been done in isolation where you have used a lot less parameters, if you may, right. to produce an engine that is capable to do simple uh, language related things, right? Um, in this particular case, it took in, I don't know if it was 175 billion parameters or something in order to, to build this engine, which is so much more than, it's, than, yeah. than has ever been attempted before. And if I'm not... I, I, th I believe when we looked at it, it was like over a year's worth of computing and training in order to get the model to do that right. Mm -hmm. So you have you have they have they've used the they've used the data from Open Web in 2021, and um, if I'm not mistaken, and and that means that it's limited to that information. That's what it's learned. So if if you're asking if you're asking it to write you an article about Donald Trump, it's probably going to suggest something like make. America great again, right? It's yeah. not going to have recent knowledge about what happened around Donald Trump, and it wouldn't be able to put that in context. So yeah. you would have to you would have to give it that in case you would like to complement that. Right, right, right. So essentially, uh, because we are so used to uh, to uh, uh, to communicate uh, with the internet in real time, like when we ask Google something, we expect it uh, to give us the result of what happened like two seconds ago or yesterday. But this model essentially is trained on data. That was a fixed amount of data um, up until 2021. So as you point out, I don't know exactly when in 2021, yeah. but that's that's, that's how that. I, my understanding. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you ask it about like current events, uh, it doesn't understand that because that's no. not the data it's trained on essentially. No, exactly. And so whenever GPT-4 or the next um, large LLM is launched, that is also going to be trained uh, on a set amount of data, essentially. Yeah. So I suppose the next big revolution in AI is to figure out um, an AI model that can communicate in real time. So to say that is yeah. not existing today. No, that that doesn't exist. And I mean, it's it's maybe maybe it doesn't even have to be um, trained on real time. At least it needs to learn or be able to pick up information, uh, more recent information, and enhance sort of what it knows. 
Um, but I mean, this is also the limitation of the, the chat GPT. There's loads of them, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of debate going on in, in how it's biased towards male versus yeah. females and, and, and different, you know, racial things and all of these different stuff. So, I mean, you, it's never going to be better than the data you put into it, right? Yeah. So it's going to be whatever, whatever, and we don't know what, exactly what that was, right? So um, the, the engine itself doesn't know what's truth and what's lie. It's like it doesn't. It's not yeah. capable of that. It's just going to interpret a lot of content, and it's going to take that as a fact. It's just that's just how it is, right. um, unless someone is coming in and correcting that. And that seems to be a lot of focus in in when it comes to the next sort of GPT four, right? That seems to be a, a big piece of it. Is that um, it's going to use so much more parameters, like it's a trillion, if I'm or a, or a hundred trillion, a hundred times more at least than yeah. than what it's using right now, and and it's also. Um, it's going to be much more advanced in terms of how much you have they have worked with that data in order to actually teach it afterwards what's what's potentially right and wrong right man. did did you see that uh, image uh, of like chat p looking like a uh, breadcrumb and then uh, uh, sorry gpt3 uh, looking like a breadcrumb and then and then kind of like yeah. gpt4 uh, like so much bigger like yeah, no, eclipsing a gpt3 <laughs> and so um it, uh, this is circulated on the internet right on, yeah there, there is yeah. A, there is actually another video which is about the universe and the suns in the universe i yeah. don't know if you have seen that but that is okay. that is the same it's like every time there's like this is the sun yeah uh, you know <laughs> this is the sun of the sun so it's like, it just keeps going and, and and this is a little bit the same experience with this right it's just the more parameters you're putting into it yeah it's a hundred times bigger than that Bigger than that. Um, okay, there was an uh, interview recently, just a couple of days ago at the time of this recording, with the um, uh, OpenAI CEO, uh, Sam Altman. And he got asked this question, mm. like, uh, have you seen this like image? And, and uh, Sam, the CEO of OpenAI, he said, oh my God, people are begging to be disappointed, he said. Mm. Uh, because uh, it, it, it's like this was based on some rumor that was like uh, speculation like three years ago how many parameters was kind of green into GPT-4 but he said um, if we do a quick calculation of, of this like a thousand times more parameters than GPT-3 um, it would basically lead to uh, like a thousand year of processing in order to create this model basically and he said that, he said that uh, what they are focusing on now for GPT-4 is to make this uh, process more efficient, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. So cram more parameters in there, but then uh, c computes in a shorter amount of time. But he said that that, that image should be disregarded for All now, right. actually. Fair yeah. <laughs> but it was uh, still interesting, I thought. Uh, obviously, they, 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 there is... Uh, uh, at some point, I suppose, that will be the reality is just a matter of time. Maybe it doesn't happen next year, but it will uh, obviously happen at, at some point. And then you would imagine that kind of next generation, today we can write press releases, right? And, and that is kind of like the magic of, of uh, GPT-3, the obvious one. But you would imagine that pretty soon uh, you would be able to write books, for example, or mm. scripts for movies, or, you know, music, for example, or th these things, I suppose. Uh, it will be interesting to see which, um, like, if w whenever Warner Brothers or someone releases the first AI scripted <laughs> movie. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, it's uh, a possibility, uh, right? Yes. That's it's not too far away. No, no, that would be an, an interesting uh, one to see, I think, as well. And going back to your point earlier of like uh, what, um, what kind of professions will be disrupted, we spoke yesterday and uh, you made an interesting observation that. Um, you know, going back a couple of years, when we talk about AI and kind of how that will disrupt the world, we talked about like truck drivers being out of a job and, and um, self-driving cars will be like the big thing in AI. But actually, uh, that doesn't seem to be the case today. Mm. It is not those type of operations that are being disrupted today. It is more... And completely opposite. The, yeah. yeah, no, I, I saw that somewhere as well and I got inspired by that and that was a big... It's actually a like really interesting insight, right, that we have been predicting AI uh, to develop in a linear fashion, but then it turned out actually that it's the, and, and, and then it makes perfect sense actually, Pierre, that the, the, the hardest thing to control is the things that you can't, that is around you. Right. There are the things that you can't control. I mean, it's, it's actually, when you think about it logically, it makes sense that you can actually uh, develop a language model like this and you can feed it instructions because you're, you're asking someone to do a piece of work within a closed environment. Mm. 
Um, when you're asking a car to drive itself, you don't control all the other drivers on the road and the weather and everything else that is going on, right? And that's like sort of these environmental circumstances that that makes it incredibly difficult. Um, but it's still, yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's an in interesting observation that it completely just hit us in the face, and then we yeah. realized like, oh yeah, um, that wasn't really what we expected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so it seems to be as you mentioned, the the important word is like. Um, AI will disrupt the uh, professions uh, which um, which have like predictable parameters, so to say, or like that operates in the digital sphere, which is uh, perfectly predictable. So I was thinking about one thing, which is kind of like law. Like uh, if you are um, if you're a lawyer or uh, whatnot, uh, wouldn't it be pretty reasonable to think that like the next generation of of uh, ChatGPT would be able to kind of create the perfect case. For someone, <laughs> or yeah, possibly or, or strategize. You mean, or because I mean, legal yeah. legal text. I'm quite convinced that that is around the corner. Like, uh, yeah. be able to formulate good terms and conditions for for you know, sort of a software that you're selling or or something like that. That I think is fairly easy to do. So yeah. I mean, that's actually a really good observation. That legal legal exactly. is probably very. Yeah, they should watch themselves. <laughs> or, or, or think about <laughs> they, like they should think about what they do or in think terms about, of providing value. <laughs> speaking about like AI taking over the world or whatever, it's like th think about um, here in Malta, for example. Uh, if you end up in a court case in Malta, you're locked up for like two or three years. You know, there's so many court cases, and um, there's not enough resources to to dig deep into these uh, court cases. So it's kind of like quick verdicts or like, they, mm -hmm. you know, they try to be efficient, whatever. And uh, you would imagine that uh, you can just feed the case into the AI and it can recommend you a verdict, for example, mm -hmm. still overseen by a human being, by the magistrates, for example. Yeah. But you would imagine that if you train the, the AI model enough, it will be able to give you a perfect uh, verdict more or less every time. Well, maybe. Um... That that's that's one interesting uh, perspective <laughs> on it, and and uh, but but I think it, it, but I still think like I'm a little bit stuck on on when we yeah. when we speak about legal, I I still get a little bit stuck around the whole fact of of, for example, going through tons of uh, cases from the past. For example, yeah. this type of technology would probably lend itself really well yeah. to be able to highlight, for example, what similar other cases has been uh, in different countries or different places, right. uh, which could brought up as as example i don't know like too much about that space in itself but i can imagine that that is going to be a, a a huge huge benefit and yeah. and even like drafting but I can, I can think about from my personal perspective in terms yeah. of like legal i i think of that a lot about um um yeah be able to be able to draft really good stuff like that i think everyone is going to be able to do uh, pretty well in yeah, exactly. in as a, as a business as a new business as anyone really be able to draft pretty pretty decent like sort of terms and conditions and stuff like that for yeah. for themselves whatever they need yeah exactly so so uh, so essentially like like copywriters is pretty straightforward that's a profession i think already today that is being disrupted and uh, mm. you know um and translations translations which is part of that kind of because yeah. it's just language in the same way exactly it's like immediate disruption and then you yeah. would imagine that like the next step will be kind of like lawyers who are drafting contracts who are drafting but i think they can delegate so. that as well it's like a little bit of a like doing the work that takes time again right the, the, the coming up with what's good giving good instructions a legal counsel can do that that is experienced and have and and can and can think about that in the context of the product that is being provided what's important than drafting it the, yeah. the, you know which is um, more more efficiency essentially yeah, productivity exactly this right. is a productivity play like so rather 100 than, yeah so ra rather than a contract taking you know eight hours to draft it will take 20 minutes for, yeah. for a lawyer for example for, for, or or five seconds depending on how yeah. uh, how you use it i suppose yeah. um no but i i think this is a productivity play all along like this is this is the main thing that i see in front um and then um there is a lot of advancements that will be made in the technology that would probably enable it to do other things because i i can see there there being true disruptions uh, obviously everyone is talking about what happens to google and how this is like sort of changing that yeah. game but when it when it gets when it gets connected in the right way to be able to source and read and you know it doesn't even have to be real time but let's say that it's real time then it's incredibly powerful imagine even like um the affiliates that are building 
um, for travel systems for you to set up, like to find the right flights to different destinations and stuff? What if they actually understood intent and how you like to travel and what you like and don't like? There's there's like that type of stuff. You actually have to do that yourself when you're doing yeah. it. And that I I can see that also like being like the next generation of that, right? Be able to to do that in a good way. Right. I wonder what this, uh, you know, from my own personal perspective here, we are running um, a media business and uh, a news portal and, you know, uh, we're trying to get eyeballs to our to our content. Uh, I wonder what will happen to kind of SEO and affiliation mm. going forward, for example. I mean, um, uh, AI generated content uh, based on, on, on GPT and so on. I wonder how disruptive that will be in the SEO world as well. Yeah, it it it's obviously uh, should <laughs> yes, yeah. allow um, uh, content creators, like especially at least uh, traditional. I'm not an SEO expert, um, but in 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 my past, at least when I was exposed to it, it had to do with a lot of content being published, and yes. and and that certainly is becoming a lot easier. Yeah. And and it can probably do a decent job at it, uh, probably a better job than a lot of uh, that that type of work that is being done right now. So I think it's, yeah, sure. I don't know, but we don't know what, what the response and the, what's going to happen on the other side, right? No, How no. this is going to affect the prioritization of search engines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, School and, is another thing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's been a huge thing. Like, yeah. that's just like they, they even even the Maltese schools. They're like, right. they don't know what to do with this. Like, oh. <laughs> I had some people at work. My kids are not old enough to to yeah. uh, to write, you know, sort of uh, uh, to do that type of work right now. Uh, but I have a couple of them at, at at the office, and they were like, they don't know what to do. It's like uh, yeah. the teachers, they don't know how to tackle this because they get handed these like sort of you right. know A A rated papers, like you know, right. and they don't know if it's who wrote it <laughs> they have no idea it's like how these incredible it. papers all of yeah. a sudden <laughs> and and it's apparently happening all over the place and i would do the same i'm like you know if i would be in school i'd probably do the same it's like yeah, yeah. i have this technology i'm gonna do it but um, it's, like, it's like what do you do about it because in a way this is <laughs> this is like the world upgrading itself yeah and so the schools like yeah you can say like you're well, not allowed to use well, GDP, but this is going to be part of our world. Yeah, it? fine, but but I think you know it's like maybe the assignment has to change. I mean, rather than trying yes. to fix the problem by identifying what's what's because it is kind of all authentic. It's just different definitions of it, yeah. right? Um, and I, I think the assignment would have to change. I, I can't see any other real solution. How are you? How are you ever going to? You're not going to be able to decipher it, I think, or maybe you can, but. No, yeah. like unless you can develop another AI that can compare previous work of the person that has been yeah. done and then be able to see that you are not, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, yeah, is exactly. not possibility, like <laughs> forging, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I think the assignments would change. I think you would do it in a different way or in a different environment. Maybe you have to write it under, not under supervision, but at least it, it, it would probably take place in a different way, I think. I think they should just, the school should just like, fuck it. <laughs> You, okay, we have the all-knowing assistant as part of your life. Let's just learn how to use it the best way possible. Yeah, and and it's sure. like it's like your job in school is to become like perfect at communicating with the AI. Fine, but <laughs> and you then still, you can do all the yeah, job. Yeah, but you. you still you still need like you still it's still very valuable. I I have my entire career is sort of built on the fact that I that I like to learn what goes on under the hood, and I find that is my competitive edge. So I mean, it's like I can't. I can't really picture like me telling my kids that they should not learn like sort of the hard way how things are done and then amplify it with a technology like this. Like I would still like them to understand that um, enough, right? And then, then it's like a really hard like point on how far to push it. But I, I, I believe that it's an advantage because you, you, still, you still need to sit on top of this, right? Even if you know how to use it. Our grandfathers, Simon, when they uh, were like farming the uh, the land and they were like living off their land and building their own house and so on and so forth then they got kids and the kids were like no i want to move into the city and i want to follow the next technologies then the the, the grandfathers were like ah, i don't respect people who can't build their own house and they can't plow their fine, own farms fine i know where you're going with this but i don't mean it like that i didn't mean it like that extreme right i'm i'm like sort of i'm here and now okay yeah. and we need to we need to adapt to what we need to know in the current environment and yeah, i think yeah. right now the technology is not like it's not mature enough to always do it right so you need to be able to vet it and you need to be able to know how to say oh you're wrong or you're right 
okay, but we can have this discussion when when we're there and when the technology is available. But right now, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. a bit too early. <laughs> but I mean, I'm with you, okay. <laughs> but I, I do actually personally, I enjoy learning about farming as well. Yeah. I think that's like, why not? Like, who knows? People are eating meat. They don't know where it comes from. It's like, come yes. on. It's like, I think it's yeah. important. Yeah, like, yeah. come on. Even if it's like um, education that is like more of a learning about it it still makes sense i i find it really interesting anyway yeah yeah no, fair, fair enough and uh, like we said when when the uh, when the service goes down when we can't use it mm. then all of a sudden we have to use our hands again and, uh, mm -hmm. same thing there when my handyman gets sick and he can't fix my ac you know then what do i do exactly you, know what I mean? you have to go I, in gotta do it myself go go all matrix style on this you exactly. know go all the way and then suddenly we are back without them you know it's like <laughs> then, uh, then we're back to doing everything ourselves exactly um uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Simon, so uh, we talked about like what professions uh, can be disrupted, you know, for mm -hmm. now in the midterm and so on. And, and uh, clearly there are quite a few, um, especially on, on the artistic side, like music. Yes, and, 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 and so but, even, but even the graphical side, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, that, that I think is really exciting. Yeah. That, that, that was also really unexpected. And I yeah. think that there's, there's a whole new art form being developed, which is beautiful. It's beautiful yeah. stuff. And, and um, yeah. It's, it's yeah. super cool like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, but, but then if we turn the question around instead and we say, like, what uh, kind of human-led professions will thrive under the next generation of yeah. AI tools and so on? Is there anything yeah, that I, you can see that well, um, actually benefits? I think there are, um, I mean, I, I think there's going to be a new breed. I, I like the word producer. Right. I, I really like that. We, we use that title actually internally when it comes to building product and stuff like that. Um, but I like the word producer because you're like sort of orchestrating a number of different things. You're strategizing, uh, but you also are, you, you're having a vision and you're also like sort of trying to figure out how to get from A to B um, in that process. And, and I think the producers, uh, any sort of producer, anyone who can qualify themselves as a producer, they're going to thrive in this environment. They are like suddenly the people who have been, you know, doesn't have enough capacity, right? That, that just waits for this type of tech to help them, you know, try more, fail faster, do more, like, and, and just express their ideas very, very quickly. That sort of, um, I'd, I'd like to call that producers. And I think those are going to hugely benefit from this. That, that's, a, that's such a good point. And, and um, I thought about this exactly the same point as well for, for this question. And, and um, I heard someone else make a very similar point to, to you. Um, rather than producer, they use the word conductor. Okay. So, so you can imagine as we go into the future already today, people, you know, most people know about ChatGPT. They know about Midjourney to create uh, AI images. But there is another, you know, a hundred AI tools today mm. that you can use. And and so, uh, to your point of like trying things and like figuring things out uh, and and figuring out many tools and so on, I think that it seems to me that. Um, if you can become a conductor of AI tools and just mm. rapidly understand how the ecosystem can benefit what you are trying to create, and so um, and so like uh, so for example the um, the example we used in the beginning here with uh, with uh, Talrik who produced uh, these uh, images based on ChatGPT together with Midjourney and mm. he created these superheroes uh, from super the cool. industry. He's um, creating something new. Exactly. And as we go forward, you would imagine that uh, maybe he will have uh, 50 different tools to his disposal yeah. to, to understand how to best use them in an organization to reach their goals or to just come up with new ideas based on all these tools that you have together. It's like Fine. you're conducting but I, I think you need to, But you think you need to empower. It's more about empower. Yeah. I, I like the, the idea of empowering individuals, right? That right. Because in a way, when I think and when I'm talking about a producer, um, it's 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 about the fact that execution, um, you know, ten years ago was yeah. was really really hard in general. Like it took a lot of time, and I think like practices that people have and businesses have been adopting are to do things that work and do more of it, right? And then then they find their way in in that in terms of how to maybe you're running a media house and you start figuring out how to do these podcasts and you do yeah. you do podcasts and then and then you're publishing media articles um but when you're an explorer yes. like someone that is like really just i have so many ideas right yeah. but i don't i don't have all of the time in the world to do it that's or, that's or a money. limiting yeah right. or money yeah. and and that limits your ability to innovate and grow and stuff and these these people are going to thrive because 
right. least in the context of what is available right now. Um, for example, um, when we're talking about content creation, um, in CRM, we have this, this, this problem right in front of us. Execution is something that the productivity is something that we've been trying, we've struggling with for a long time. Um, and now a CRM producer, if you may call him that, then right. would be able to have all of these ideas and they can fail really fast. They can just try it right. and they can see it straight away on the screen. They don't have to wait a week or two weeks to like for this to fertilize and like see, okay, how did this actually work? They can just go and you say like, okay, I have this idea, putting it there. I'm looking at it right. 30 seconds later. And you can actually say, yeah, I want to, I want to build on this. This is something like that really looks good. That's, that's, that's what I find really exciting. And that's like even, and that, that you can do in many different directions. Like the quicker you can fail, I think is, 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 is the important part here is like, I can explore different ideas and run in different directions. It's just more available when we think about it in practical context, if you say, yeah, if you issue a press release, maybe people write press, oh, social media post, okay? Everyone posts on social media at some point in LinkedIn. It's very easy to picture this. Like I have an idea on what I want to do. Maybe something like this. It might, now it doesn't take that long to write a post update, but uh, you, you, still, you still get the idea, right? That you can, you can try five, six, 10 different ways of doing it because it can be, you can just try it and then see like, okay, no, I like this direction. I'm going to work on that. It just helps. It just drives productivity to a completely different new level. Right. It's it's a very entrepreneurial, basically, mindset that you go into. I, where... I, I think so. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's an important one. Yeah. Exactly. So so essentially, what you're saying is like if you have an idea, um, even if you are curious to experiment in certain ways, in the in the old world, like before mm. these AI tools, you would need a lot of resources to test your ideas, essentially. Exactly. Both, both money and time. And we are talking about coding, right? It's, yeah. it's the same thing. You might have an idea about something that you think would work. And it's like, and this, and I think this recreational, I said that before, I think the type of recreational uh, coding, uh, it works fine. You know, it's it's perfect. Just produce it. Maybe you can find your ways to navigate what what this provides to you and you can build something really quick. You can press it and you can say, actually, this didn't work and that wasn't fun. And it like, yeah. and you can try something else and run in a different direction. But typically that would take a long time to do, right? Right, right, right. And now you're getting, just taking shortcuts. Yeah. And, and, but when it comes to actually building the actual software that you might end up scaling on, that what, what becomes the core of whatever you're doing, that probably requires a little bit more attention because it needs to, it has a lot of other complexities that, that there's not taken into consideration here, whether it be scalability and, and, and all of these different things. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's exciting. Yes. Uh, I, I want to talk uh, about, uh, your own journey now into, um, into integrating, uh, GPT three into your own CRM. But before we do that, I just a quick observation as well, before we move on is that individuals, like we all have our <laughs> shortcomings, uh, say, and, and mm. um, just as an example, my, my girlfriend, she is like slightly dyslectic and also uh, English is not her first language, for example. And um, so that's a quite limiting factor, mm -hmm. you know, if you are a professional today, because most professions are basically by a computer, involves a lot of writing, sending emails and so on and so forth. And so my girlfriend have found a lot of like coping mechanisms in order to get away with like writing okay emails and so on. But it takes her a lot longer time than what it would take for um, yeah. any, any given person to compose those emails. Um, and so with uh, ChatGPT overnight, her dyslexia is irrelevant, right? It's uh, it doesn't matter anymore if you're dyslexic or not because yeah. you can compose. And so in my case, for example, I am just, I mean, when it comes to like anything that is artistic, like drawing and so on. <laughs> I, I mean, it's like, it's embarrassing whenever, <laughs> whenever we play charades or something, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is so embarrassing. Everyone just laughs at me. But, um, but now, you know, I can, I can compose my own artist uh, because I will have ideas that I want to compose into an image yeah. or whatever. And now I can do that through AI tools instead of we can like perfect mm -hmm. my like shitty drawings or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so Great. I just want to make that observation stuff so like on an individual level, um, many of the kind of weaknesses that you have uh, can be cured by... I mean, it stuff. is like, it's so, that's one of the best aspects mm -hmm. is like how we can empower individuals. Right? I, yes. I love that word, by the way, is just empowering yes. people and empowering individuals. Like, I, 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 you know, you, you have 
really good examples on on someone that gains a lot more confidence maybe in a certain area right. just by being invalidated you, you can actually use it like as a supporting fashion i'm i can be the same sometimes like when i'm when i'm you know posting or something on social media and stuff like that i want to make sure that my english is not you know, yeah. badly written because that could have a reflection on, you know, it's not, it's not what my intent is with the post. It's right, not exactly. that what I'm getting stuck on. It could be sometimes that am I using the right words to like sort of explain this? I'm not using it because I don't like when language is used wrong because I, I look it up myself and I don't like it so much. Yeah. So then, then, you know, this is a perfect example where something like this, a tech like this can give me the confidence, right? Yeah, exactly. That, oh yeah, validated rather than slacking to a friend. Is this, you know, yeah. does this look good? Or like, you know, should I, should I change around these things a little bit? And, and I imagine she experienced exactly the same thing and that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And, and how many people, yeah. right? how many people that has that, that has, you know, various of different things that they want, what they might want a little bit more confidence in the work that they're doing or the things yeah. that they're doing where, where this can just be such a supporting yeah, factor yeah. is great. It's like fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for her, it's an absolute revolution and it's just, it's a beautiful thing that come out of this. Um, but yes, I want to go into, uh, to, um, to fast track now. So obviously mm -hmm. uh, you guys have been in the forefront here and you, you are launching uh, your integration with the GPT-3 into your CRM. Can you talk a little bit more about what you are creating uh, here? Yeah, so as, as I said a little bit earlier, um, I've been doing so many talks on iGaming Next and, uh, and on the stage of Valletta and all of these things talking about what the future ambition of Fast Track is. So we've set out the digitalized industry and delivered the first self-learning engagement platform. In the process of doing that, we've developed something called the Singularity Model. And the Singularity Model focuses on scaling, scaling with one-to-one -one experiences and scaling with self-learning. There has just been like in, in the whole equation of, of approaching one-to-one -one experiences and, and, and everything that that entails. Because what happens is that the problem you run into is that um, traditional CRM platforms, they have been designed to target one group of players with one campaign at a time. And what we built in the new platform was the ability to do um, to do matchmaking between content and players. So you can have a content library of 100, 150 campaigns, and then you can have a, a million players on the other side and the platform is able to, to figure that out. You still need to produce like sort of the 150 campaigns that you intend to send to the players, right? And that presents itself with an executional burden, right? There is a productivity issue there. There is a going from idea that I have, I have this idea about, I want to reactivate players and I have my players that I've tried to reactivate. They are, can be categorized into these different features, you know, in terms of how they behave and these type of per personas, uh, they have different deposit patterns and like different type of bonuses. The system is now able to suggest what those different dimensions are that you are targeting with and suggest to you, okay, you're building a content library. You're going to need you know, a vast amount of content and you're going to need it in these different dimensions to, to effectively be able to target different, you know, a one-to-one, -one, pro produce a one-to-one -one experience to the players. This technology now that in the absence of that, you obviously have to set up all of these different campaigns and bonuses. And that takes a lot of time. Now it can be done in seconds, or at least you can, you can set up like, this is what I want to produce. I want to have these 75 different type of offers or or different type of campaigns that I want to that I want to run in my collection. You go and have a coffee, and you come back, and it's done. You review it, then you click the next button, and it's translated. Yeah. It's like it's done, and and suddenly, so so what I'm, it's also what I said when I shared the news now on on LinkedIn. It's like this is just like an unprecedented level of productivity and growth and innovation that we're going to see from the partners that are working with us because they they just like removing this it's completely removing the burden of execution and it's great. It's like, it produces really great stuff. I mean, it's not like the chat GPT engine cannot be integrated. So we are using, or at least not yet. Um, so we are using, uh, some other APIs that are behind that. Um, and, um, there is a lot of magic that needs to happen in the, in the middle layer. So to say what we need to do on our side to make it really, really useful. Um, it comes a lot about providing context about iGaming and providing instructions in the right way and stuff like there is, there, there's been a lot of work going into that. So I don't want to, you know, you can, you can do probably quite a good stuff in ChatGPT directly and copy paste, but 
be able to do that at scale um, and be able to do it accurately. Yeah, and efficiently, we, I suppose. Yeah, we figured out like a, a pretty delicate way of of uh, balancing that and and still having creativity in the technology in order to produce stuff that are it's really good. It's it's like mind blowing. It's it's fantastic and and it can output you know. Um, entire experiences so it's not just a it's not just an email it's like an email and then it's coupled with an sms and a push notifications a b testing um and translations into all of the different languages and it does it in a matter of seconds mm. it's i i just like clicking around in it yeah. <laughs> i showed it to you yesterday yeah, yeah. Uh, we amazing all, yeah and it was quite cool right it's I mean, amazing it, yeah um and and we are taking this like we have been so prepared like um, I, I was telling you yeah. we've been waiting for the technology it's just like we felt very early on like is this something we should challenge you know it's something we should develop tech to overcome mm, no i think there is too many forces interested in doing that like i don't think we're gonna do the best job at at, at cracking that right so we're waiting we've been waiting we've been building everything around it everything to get it ready and now for us it's just like we just clap our fingers and we're getting in like a super vast <laughs> integration with it. So it's going to be, yeah, the, it's, I'm so excited to, um, to work closely with our partners now to just show them how it can be used, how, and, um, and see them, you know, thrive with, um, with that sort of a deep, in, deep integration on that. Right. right. Everyone is going to be out of their minds, like working in, working in CRM, um, from this point on, whether or not you would have this support in a platform or not, you, 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 you're up and running. You should be up and running. If not now, in a week, you need to be up and running on like using it as a, as a, as a, as a, as a supporting factor to your work at the very least, right? Yeah. That, that is just a given, right? So it's just a matter of, for us, it's, it's almost like hygiene before we, even, before we even release it because we don't see, now when the technology is here, we don't see how any of the teams would ever do without it. But we can do the best. What our job is here is to make sure that we do the best possible job in bridging that into the technology that we provide. Because, yeah, it's just going to unlock that productivity right. from the teams. It's like if you, if you don't use it, you're like a uh, uh, horse and cart in a world yeah. full of cars. 100%. There is, it, it is like that. And it goes so quickly. Like so quickly, like from one day to another, pretty much, you have to sort of just get on the train. I mean, if you're a hater right now, you're probably going to be a problem. <laughs> like that's just the reality. If you're if you're currently not thinking about how this is going to impact your teams operationally, not just in CRM, but in in every aspect Anything. of your business, you should be you should be taking yourself a good consideration. Do I actually need like with this available, even if it's early days, at least starting to get an idea on is this going to change how how I build my teams. And what type of people are recruited in my teams, and 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 what I promote? You should probably take an idea. You should probably take stop for a bit and just like think if that is if that changes. Right. Uh, so for for your own operation in in fast track, uh, I, I I suppose you think a lot about uh, this as well. How AI tools can support your own organization? Have, has uh, has this impacted uh, um, your organization anything to date, uh, or and uh, kind of your expectations going forward? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. No, but it's, it's like um, uh, we are we are very curious. I'm I'm very happy to see first of all that we had some really early adopters in in the organization that was like on it before me. You know, it's like everyone. It was just, there was a lot of people that was just on it straight away, and and um, you know everyone is going to have a think about how we can provide them with um, can be a support in their daily tasks and their work, and. Um, I already have a lot of people. I mean, obviously, in the marketing team, it helps a lot to be able to speed things up in the process. Um, in in how you can draft up, it's so much like there's so many aspects of how it can be useful. I mean, Jan is now working, at least using it as a supporting platform in order to draft policies in the company. It doesn't mean that it drafts this for us. She's still sending in what she wants to be featured in it, but it's still drafting the policy in itself, right? right. It's still, it's still like. I, I, I think everyone is already, um, in my company at least, everyone is already on it and, and many are already sort of reaping benefits from it. Right, right. And uh, same here, like uh, we, uh, we are now scheduling these like uh, chat GPT kind of crash courses internally because it is, at the end of the day, it is, you know, a quite disruptive uh, tool that will change the way you work. And so 
you know, many many people are used to working a certain way, and and this is all all, all of a sudden very drastic and so on. And, and so there is that element sometimes as well of people just having to get over that hump of being mm -hmm. scared of the tool. I think as well. So I, I think something that uh, that that will work for us is just to do these crash courses, gather everyone, talk a little bit about how we can use this tool to the best uh, possible way, or just show some simple examples so people. Uh, get over this like fear of the tool. I oh, think I that's think the that's first. No, but I think I think it's like in terms of strategizing it and doing it. I think that's a great way to go about it, Pierre. I think um, that makes sense. Everyone should probably do that and just like yes. open the doors and explain like this. Don't be afraid of it. Like this is this is just yeah. here to support you know and like and and this is how fun it is to work with and and this is how you can use it. I think that's a great initiative, Pierre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll continue with that then. So, so again, just going back on um, on the CRM and and the updates that you're connected now. So, it sounds to me like to summarize is is this kind of like a pathway to hyper personalization for the operators to uh, to essentially like hyper personalize the message to each individual player? Is that where this is leading to? Um, Yes, I think that's the ultimate play in this. But, uh, but but again, like we are we are we are looking at it from a productivity perspective still, um, and uh, and in order to overcome that, like our pathway has always been <laughs> hyper personalization, if you want to call it that, or scaling with one to one experiences, as we call it, and and self learning. So this is a piece of the puzzle. This is something that unlocks, removes a burden that should never have been there in the first place. Like right. that's not. <laughs> this is not like the the. This is not the thing that it excites us, you know, the, the, there is other parts that are um, of the chain of events that is like in, in scaling with one-to-one -one experiences, the fact doing it is, is the fun part, not producing the content to get there, right? Yeah. So we still see it as a productivity play and, and, and I think, yes, I think it's leading there. Um, um, and I, you know, we are, we are fortunate that we, um, we made some choices right now in terms of getting ourselves ready for this tech and now it's ready and we can be very, very fast moving on it. Which was great, and yeah. Uh, yeah, but that hyper personalization—we don't use that term, but absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. that's that's where it's going to go. And it, it it would seem it would seem to me as well that the natural progression in this is you, you still have kind of like the, the prompt master, if you will, the the person who inputs the prompts to create the the the, um, the campaigns that you're looking to create. Mm -hmm. But you would imagine that the the next natural step is that uh, the um, the AI basically learns to A/B test itself or. Sure. Uh, and then eventually it creates its own campaigns. Uh, yeah. uh, that seems no, to me that's, to be the that's, next step. That, that's not too distant. Um, mm. But I think I think it requires. Um, yeah, the, the, we we are not. I I don't think we know how far away that is right now. Mm. I think we need to wait a little bit because it still it still does stuff wrong. <laughs> yeah. It still it still, it still makes mistakes. A human yeah. So I mean, it's just the like. Middle. There needs to be some. Even if you don't verify every piece of content that goes out. Um, I think we need to build confidence in the technology and working with the technology before we leave it right. on its own. Right. It's just amazing, again, that we are at 1.0 and a month of the launch of ChatGPT, and it's been such an insane revolution because usually 1.0 products are like well, you know, somewhat useful. You can kind of see a pathway to becoming more, but, but this it, is but such a big step like, already. It has been around for a while though, right? I mean, the, the I think they call it 3.5, this this version that we are using right now. So I think I think it has been um, not useful for a while. <laughs> oh, no. and, and, that, and, that, and that the version that is made available in the current chat GPT is, is like sort of, it, was, it just took the step, I think, because language, language tech and the AI models around language has been doing it very poorly and robotically has been able to do it for a while. Um, but then be able to produce it the way that you experience it now has never been able to do before. Um, the human-like element or, or whatever you want to call it, right, which is be able to do it in that fashion. Um, but yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So. You will be showcasing this at uh, at Einstein essentially, uh, Simon. So that yes. will be the the grand reveal. Yeah, exactly. No, that's going to be exciting. Uh, we obviously have a lot of stuff to show at Eyes, but this is going to be, I'm sure, it's going to be a, something people are quite excited about trying out and playing around with. But it's 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 so seamless. It's it's fun. Number one, it makes the work fun, and then it's like sort of producing really qualitative content and. Uh, and it makes it so productive and, and um, yeah, it's going to be really great to show everyone. Fantastic, Simon. Um, thank you so much for, for today. And as a plot twist today, this whole conversation has been scripted by ChatGDP. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> All of my answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one hour later. Uh, no, actually, it is it is the actual Pierre, the actual Simon who's speaking today. But uh, maybe who knows? In a in a year's time, we'll basically use the AI the, version the AI of ourselves. avatars and, exactly. and like all of it. And, and, it, it. and we'll be like super smart in that. And we'll be, yeah, they'll be we'll cool. Take all the credit. Because then we can be in so many more places at the same time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much uh, for today, Simon. Thank Look you. Thanks for sharing the uh, the details with us and your information today and knowledge. Thank, Thank you. you.